In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to install XAMPP for the Mac. Okay, so if you go to uh, apachefriends.org slash download.html, it'll take you to this page. Uh, you can download it for Windows, Linux, or also for Apple computers. And uh, I'm going to download the latest package, which at this time of the video is 1.8.3, and it has the newest PHP version, 5.4. 511, uh, and this is going to be for 64 bit. Okay, it's going to do this, and I'm not going to make you watch me download this. Okay, so that took several minutes to download. I'm going to go down here and uh, open it however you need to do that on your computer. Open your installer, and you're going to get this package. We'll go ahead and launch that and say yes. Go ahead and give it your credentials. And it's going to take you to this uh, Bitnami installer. And so go ahead and click on Next. We're going to go ahead and leave these alone and do the default install. Oh, let me go back. Notice that it's going to put it in your Applications folder. So it'll go into Applications slash XAMPP. Okay. And don't worry about this. I'm going to take this checkbox off. I don't want to learn more right now about Bitnami. We can learn about that later if we want. Go ahead and click on Next, and it's going to go through this installer, which will take a few minutes. Okay, so now it's finished, and we're going to go ahead and launch XAMPP. Click on Finish. And you'll notice that it goes ahead and opens up a uh, a web browser and it automatically opened it in Safari for me. And you'll see here in what would normally be the domain location, it says Lee's MBP for MacBook Pro. Anyway, that's the name of my computer. And then it goes to a folder called XAMPP and then a splash page. Um, we're going to go ahead and click English. We shouldn't have to go to that every time. But notice that it keeps on referring to Lee's uh, slash, or excuse me, uh, hyphen MBP. What it's doing here is it's making um, a name resolution in my computer so that it can just go to the name of this computer. Um, that's not something that it is going to do automatically in a Windows computer, um, and uh, but it's, it's working that way here. But what we're going to do is, for the sake of consistency in this class, what we're going to do is not use the name of your computer here. We're going to type in the word in this first position called localhost. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and enter. And then you'll see that it resolves to exactly the same, uh, the same page. Localhost is something that um, all computers essentially have um, in their, it's referred to as a hosts file. And uh, that hosts file refers to its its own address, also known as a loopback address, and that address on all computers is going to be 127.0.0.1. And you notice that if I do that, it comes back to the exact same page. So what it's doing is it's resolving both the name of my computer that I have set up, and it's also resolving the word localhost to this address called 127.0.0.1. But just know that we're going to be using the word localhost here. And also that localhost, as I said, and 127.0.0.1, these are self-contained environments on your computer. So each person in this class, each person who ever does this, um, they have a, exactly the same thing where it's localhost resolving to 127001. Everybody has that on their own computer. But if I were to try to reach you through the web by typing localhost, I wouldn't be able to do that. It would resolve back to my own uh, computer, which is sort of like saying me, myself, I. Each one of us has that option. We can all say that, and everybody knows that we're talking about ourselves. All right, so um, that's kind of important uh, that you understand that and that later whenever you go to submit work to me, um, I can't see what's on localhost. So whatever you're doing on your own development server and you need help, then um, 
I can't see your source code. What you're going to need to do is you're going to need to take what you have on your own computer and you'll need to throw it up on the server in the location that, uh, that is provided to you. And that way I will actually have access to your source code. But anything that's you know, sitting in your own computer under localhost uh, in the htdocs folder, which we'll get to in a second, I can't, I can't see that. Okay, only you can see that. All right, let's move on. So I'm going to just show you around this uh, panel over on the side. Um, if we look at status, you'll see that everything um, here is activated for um, the server side includes Perl, PHP, and so forth. The only thing that's not activated is the MySQL database. That's honestly not a very big deal because we're not going to be using it right away. But if you want to know how to activate it, I want you to come over here and this little icon, it looks like a gear and a teardrop. Um, it, right now, uh, mine's already open. You might be able to click on yours and have something open up. But if I come down here, um, it's going to give me a control panel. This is your XAMPP control panel. And these are the three um, services that are available on uh, Macintosh computers. So we have the Apache web service that's running. That's our web service. And that's the only reason right now that if that's the only reason that we're able to do this localhost resolution. If I were to select this Apache web server and say stop, okay, and it's stopping the service, and the service is something that runs in the background, and now I were to try to go to localhost, let's go to that address, it tells me that it can't find the server because the web service isn't running. That's really important to understand that localhost is going to be an address that works only when your web service on your computer is working. That's why we had to install this, okay, because we're going to have to have this web service running on our own computers to run PHP. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start that back up again. But this is where uh, MySQL needs to be started. Um, so on my computer, it didn't automatically start the database service. So if you wanted to access your database service, you could select it in the control panel and click start. Okay, and then it takes a second to get it going. And it will come on and when the little light goes green it means it's fully running okay so there we go and now if I come back here my web service is running I can access this now if I look at status you'll see that MySQL is, um, is activated all right let's look at security also and it tells you that all these things are unsecure all right I'm not going to worry about this, um, and I don't really think you need to either, because this is your own local environment. The only time maybe that you would need to worry about not having root passwords on your PHP MyAdmin, and I'll explain what that is in just a minute, um, and you know that this stuff is accessible, is if maybe you're in an airport and you don't want somebody to have any kind of way to get a port into your computer. Um, and if that's the case, you can just... Um, disable the service. If you're really concerned about it and you do want to be working in a public space like a coffee shop or airport, all you need to do is go and add um, passwords to the MySQL uh, user and so forth. But honestly, unless you're you know, just incredibly worried about security, people are not going to be rooting around the web um, typically on these public networks, you know, trying to find secret ways into your computer. And even still, it would be very difficult for them to get in. So um, anyway, uh, we'll just move forward. There's documentation components. Um, we're not going to worry about applications. That's that Bitnami stuff, if you want to look at it. That's for WordPress and Drupal and things like that. We'll get into that later. The other thing I wanted to show you now that uh, MySQL is running is this thing called PHP MyAdmin. And we're not going to use this now, but this is a web interface that allows you to connect to the database service. Um, otherwise, you would have to do it all through command line, and it's awful. Um, <clears throat> and that's how you know people used to always have to do it until this tool came up, and there's some other tools that you can also use. But this one's a really handy feature. And this is one that you're going to see on almost every single um, web host that you can buy hosting from. OK, so this is a good one to learn. It's a, and, and it has a, a, a connection that allows the um, PHP service or the PHP module to connect into the database. So, uh, but right now, don't worry about any of that. Okay, so this is our uh, interface stuff, and I want to show you something else too. We have the web address localhost and then forward slash zamp. 
okay, and then it's automatically going to index.php. This XAMPP folder is inside of a folder called htdocs. Um, I'm going to show you in the next demo where those files are located. I'm, I'm going to stop this one just a second, but I do want to make a point to show you that if I get rid of the rest of this address and I just go to localhost and I hit return, it automatically takes me back to this XAMPP folder. Okay, there's a redirection file that's sitting in the main web serving directory. So in the next demo, I'm going to show you how to root around and find where these files are located so that you'll know where to put your files for testing and also how to get around this always happening.